Alright, so you have just installed your first GNU slash Linux system. In this video, I'm going to show you the very basics of using a terminal. Alright, so the two first commands you're going to want to learn are ls and cd. ls allows you to list all the files in your current working directory. By default, when you open up a terminal, it will open up in your home directory. and uh, your home directory is basically like, um, well, it's the directory allocated for your specific user. If you do ls in here, you will see a bunch of directories like desktop, do documents, downloads, music, standard stuff that you would find on Windows as well. Now, ls has a bunch of arguments to it as well. Arguments are given with a dash and a letter, usually. For example, if we do ls-l, we are able to see the permissions for every single file. Now, you don't really need to worry about these, but essentially the D at the start shows if this is a directory or not, and this rwx shows if you can read, write, and execute the file. As you can see, all of these are directories, so we can write, can execute, we can read. They're all owned by me, so I can do whatever I really want to them. This also shows the owner and the owner's group. But alright, ls-a allows you to show hidden files. Now, let me just go into a different directory for this. For example, if I go into dev here, then do ls-a. It will show this dot and dot dot. By the way, the cd command is the second command, and that one allows you to change directory. It's pretty intuitive. It's honestly just you type cd and then the path to the directory you want to go to. Now dot represents your current directory and two dots represent the previous directory for example if i do cd dot dot i will go back to home the tilde in the path represents your home directory you can also go to your home directory by simply typing cd like so there are two types of paths you can give to cd for example you can do cd and a absolute path which starts at slash or root and then you can go through this whole system so this is root this is where your entire Linux file system is kept think of it as like your C drive and Windows it's similar to that you go CD slash root and then home which is all all the users are kept in there and then your username so mine is zero flag but yours is probably different I will go back to home now this is an absolute path a relative path is relative to the current directory you're in for example if I go to dev this is a relative path the next command is touch and touch is able to create a file for example I can do touch test.txt by ls I see test.txt created, it's an empty uh, text document. I can also create a hidden file, and a hidden file is simply a uh, prefix with a dot, like so, dot text to dot txt. If I do ls, I can't see it, but if I do ls-a, I can see it, here, dot text to dot txt. But what if you want to create a directory? Well, that's done using the mkdir command. mkdir, make directory. I can create a directory like so. Uh, so we can call it test underscore dir. Files cannot have uh, spaces in them, by the way. That's a rule in the Linux uh, born shell. Just the one all of the distributions use. Here it's test there, and I can go into it, like so. 
No. Files can also be moved around and copied using the command line. For example, if I want to move my test.txt file into test.dir, I can do mv test.txt, so this would be the source file, source path, and then test underscore dir. Now, if test underscore dir didn't exist, what this would actually do is move test.txt into a file called test underscore dir. It would not be a directory. To specify that you're moving it into a directory, you need to add a slash at the end like so. Now, if we go into test dir, the file is in there. We can also spe uh, move the hidden file in here as well. So mv dot dot slash, remember dot dot is the previous directory, dot text to dot txt. Oh, how did I do that? How did I autocomplete this? Well, to autocomplete, you simply press tab. There's only one hidden file in the previous directory, so if I simply type a dot and then press tab, actually, no, these two count as hidden files as well. If I do dot t and then press tab, I will get text2.txt. To move it into the current directory, we simply type a dot, like so. We can see it with ls, but with ls-a, we can see it. However, what if I want to copy a file? What if I don't want to move it? Well, that's easy. That can be done using cp for copy. This has a very similar syntax to move, so test.txt into previous directory, and we can either specify it like this, which will just copy it with the same name, or we could specify a different name for it. For example, test underscore uh, test uh, underscore copy dot txt like so. It's still in here, but if we go back. Test underscore copy dot txt exists here as well. Now we can also view files. So for example, if I go into uh, let's go into here's one of my development projects. I can view the contents of a file by simply dumping them onto the command line using cat. Cat stands for concatenate, but it's mostly just used for dumping contents of a file. So cat readme.md, this is this file right here. It's going to dump the whole thing onto the terminal and I can read it like this. Now, what did I talk about with concatenation earlier? Well, for that I'll show you a different command first. So there's a command called echo, and what echo will do is it will simply print out the text you pass to it onto the command line. So we would do quotes and then hello world or something, uh, some other text, and it will print it out, so echo it out. Uh, the pretty neat thing about this is that if we cat test underscore copy dot txt, there's nothing in there, so it doesn't print anything out. But output from commands can be redirected into files. And there are two ways to do this. We have a single line redirect, which is like this, and it works, well, I'm going to show you right now, test underscore copy dot txt. Now if we cat test underscore copy, it prints out hello world. We echoed hello world, it did not print it out to the command line, instead it redirected that output into test underscore copy. However, watch what happens if we echo another line of text into that file with this single line redirect operator. This is me. This is me. So hello world is gone. It's printed out onto the same line as hello world. And sometimes we want this to happen and sometimes we don't. 
Oh, and by the way, to get the previous command you typed, you simply press up arrow on most terminals. Now, to do a multi-line redirect, you may have figured this out, but we can just do echo. This is a test. And two of these uh, together, like so. Test underscore copy dot txt. And now if we cat it out, we have both of these lines on separate lines. All right, let me just real quick make another test file. So touch test underscore copy. Well, I guess let's just do test two dot txt. Then echo something cool into there. Now if we cut it out, we get test two dot txt. Something cool. All right, now the actual purpose of cat can be shown. Cat, and we can put in an arbitrary amount of files in here, so it can be two, it can be ten, hundred, whatever. Test underscore copy, test underscore two dot txt. Uh, not underscore, just two. Oh look, it printed out this one first, and then right after that it printed out this one. Now this is what the concatenation is all about. If we cat both of these, and then get a multi-line redirect into test3.txt, and if the file doesn't exist that we're redirecting into, it will simply create the file. Now we ls. Oh look, it created this file, cat test tree.txt, and we have concatenated these two files into one, this one right here. But when you're tired of messing around with the files, what are you going to do with them? You will need to remove them. And that can be done using the rm command. rm can be used on just file names, so test to.txt and that will remove it. But what if you have like a hundred files or a thousand files? You can't just type in names for all of them. Well, you can, but it will take a very long time. You can use regular expressions for this. Now, regular expressions are a very complex topic, but I will um, I'll give you a very brief example. RM. Now, an asterisk selects all text. So, if if I did rm asterisk and this was filled with files, it would it would delete all of them, every single one. However, if I do asterisk and then dot txt, so it will do any file that has the dot txt extension here. And I type in this, it will remove all of these .txt files. Now, if I actually do rm for a directory, it won't do anything. So, if I do rm test underscore dir, it will give us a message. rm cannot remove test dir is a directory. Also, test dir is not an empty directory. And we can, we can ls, and we can give it a parameter of test dir here. To list the files inside of this tester directory, it has test.txt. If it was empty, we could do rm dir test underscore dir, but it's not empty. And for that, we can pass rm some parameters. So rm dash r is for recursive. And uh, what the recursive does is it removes every single file inside the directory and then removes the directory itself. We can also pass in a second parameter, an f. An f will force, so even if it's giving an error or something, it will still remove it, no matter what. 
test underscore dir. Okay, test dir is gone. Now rm rf is a very dangerous command. If you type this in for the wrong directory, you can cause major data loss because rm does not put files in the trash bin. It simply removes them fully and they're unrecoverable afterwards. So definitely use rm-rf with care. <clears throat> Alright, but what if your terminal doesn't scroll? Well, that would be kind of weird. Most terminals do. Mine does. But what if it doesn't? Let's go back to the readme from before. If we cat the readme here, it uh, takes up more than the whole screen. So we have to scroll up to read the whole thing. But if your terminal doesn't scroll, you can't do that, and therefore you can't read it. For that, we can use less. The less command is simply like a file viewer that will start from the top, and then we can use the arrow keys and page up and page down to scroll through the file uh, to read it, and then when we're done reading, we simply press Q and it will return us back to the shell. Uh, there's also a very cool feature in the born shell, which is this one, and it's called pipes. Now pipes are a... they're a very cool and useful thing, and everyone should know them. Now for this, let's go into something with a lot of files. So an example of that is user bin. What user bin is, is it stores all of the executables that are available system-wide. So I'll show you what I mean right now. There's a lot of stuff in here, like a serious amount. And there's no way we can find something in here by simply looking. And if we can, it will take a very long time. Plus you can have a directory that's even bigger. So, what do you do? Well, pipes come to the rescue, as well as a cool command called grep. First of all, ls simply lists all of them. Oh, I did that already, there's no point doing it again. A pipe is simply a... this, this character here. And what this does is it redirects the output of this command ls into the input of another command and uh, all right first let's put it into a command that we know called less now before i did less and the file name so it got the text from that file and, and it read it into less this time it gets the text output from ls and puts into less so we can read it like this pretty cool now the grep command gets text and it's able to search through that text for certain patterns. Now it works with regular expressions, it also just works with string literals. Uh, for this I'm going to use a string literal. So let's just say we want to find uh, this file here, C. Right, we want to find this file and I can't see it right now. Let's pretend I can't see it right now. If we do ls pipe into grep, which is the command that searches, and then we do in quotes the string literal we want to find, so C, to find it, like this, and highlight it in a red. Now if we do just an S, it will find everything that has an S and highlight the S in there and give us the name of the whole file. And there's quite a lot of files with name uh, with a letter S in them. So that's grep. Uh, just so you know, if we use grep without a pipe, though normally people use it with a pipe, but if, if we were to use it without a pipe, we, could, we would do grep readme.md or whatever file. And then let's just find like I don't know, let's find the uh, operating system in there. 
grip upper up. This. Oh no, we will do the search term first and then the file name, like this. Now this finds operating system in readme.md and prints out the whole line that contains it. So pretty sick, pretty cool. Now, uh, the final thing I want to show you is uh, how you can go into administrator mode or root mode in the command line. That is done with the sudo command. Now the sudo command, it uh, has a number of alternatives on some distributions. It might be replaced with a command called do as, which works in basically exactly the same way. Uh, you can test out which one you have by simply typing sudo like this, and if it gives you a valid output, you have it. If it doesn't, you don't have it. Now, sudo will allow you to run one command as root, and the root is the most privileged user on your system. Root can do absolutely anything, and I mean everything. It can fully erase your whole system with a singular command. Now, uh, what can sudo be used for? Uh, sudo can be used for, if we go back to user bin, we're familiar with this one, and we do ls-a in here, no, ls-l, we will see the owners of every file, and for pretty much every file here, it's root. Well, every file in here is root, the owner. So I can't edit any of these, right? If I try to rm uh, zcat, here, this one here, if I try, or try to remove it. Remove write protected regular file, If I even if I do like enter here, then I do ls-l, it's still there, so I didn't remove it. It's owned by root, and I'm not root right now. If I was to sudo remove it, don't do this by the way, if you do this it might break your system. Don't, just generally don't remove anything that you don't know what it is especially if it's in user bin. But sudo can also be used for something like installing packages. And you may think from uh, Windows that, well, programs need to be installed from installers and the installers are found in the browser. Well, no. Uh, package management can be done with a package manager. Uh, on Debian-based systems, the package manager is called apt, and this is Linux Mint here, so a Debian-based system. You can check if you have apt by typing apt, if it gives you valid output, you have apt. So how do you use apt? Well, it gives you a number of commands here, which are like sort of a secondary command that comes after apt that makes it do different things, but I'll show you the two most basic and uh, straightforward commands. Well, I guess the four most basic ones. So sudo, all of these need to be ran as a root, by the way. If you try to run apt upgrade, no, uh, apt update, it will give you a, a prompt for a password. So on some systems, it just flat out says you need root permission and doesn't do anything. So sudo apt update and you will need to type in a password for your user. I got it wrong. And what this will do, the update command, is it will simply fetch all the latest news about updates from the central repository server. It won't actually install anything. So all packages are up to date. I update my system every day, so I didn't expect this to fetch anything new. But if it does, like it says five packages can be upgraded or whatever, you would do sudo apt upgrade. And this will upgrade every possible package that, that can be upgraded. So you can see it doesn't do anything. Here, 
uh, you can remove and install packages so the two most basic and fundamental things currently I have a package installed called neofetch and it's uh, well it's not exactly a very useful one but I'm gonna remove it sudo apt remove neofetch and we need to do a yes or no thing here and I removed it but then I want to reinstall it so apt install neofetch and once again yes or no prompt you can just click enter here because the Y is capitalized and the N is uh, not so that means yes is the default option we run neofetch now so it installed it will give us info about our system and the logo for our system so it's pretty cool and uh, another command that apt offers actually I'm going to show you two more apt search allows you to search for packages so say you'll remember what it's called you know it starts with neo but you don't know what comes after and it's going to give you neo whatever it's not actually going to give you, yeah, neofetch here, there it is. So, it's going to find it, and it's pretty cool. It gives you a description of the of what the package does as well. So this apt search, and finally there's sudo, and you don't need sudo for this by the way as well, because it doesn't install anything. There's sudo apt auto remove. And what this does is it removes unused dependencies for packages that you have uninstalled and it's wise to do this after uninstalling any package because uh, it cleans up your disk of just unneeded junk and finally the last thing I'm gonna show you in this video is text editing uh, we have done like output redirection echo and stuff but Really, that's no one really does that unless it's an automated script or something. So how you edit files is through a terminal text editor. Now, pretty much all GNU slash Linux distros come with an editor called Nano. And Nano is very simple to use, so you can do Nano and specify file name. If the file doesn't exist, it will create it. If it does, it will edit it. So it opens up this really simple interface, and then you can do hello, this is a test of nano text editor for terminal. I am lead hacker. Okay, so down here we have all the shortcuts. There's not many, as you can see. There is no where is, which is control W. This carrot sign means control. And you can find the word, so say hacker, and it will bring your cursor to the word, or you can find hello. And there it is, hello. Now you can do control O, which will write or save your changes. Then you can just press enter, or you can change the name of the file here as well. But I'm not gonna do that, so right row three lines and to exit you do control uh, control x so like this and now if you cat test.txt it's there and if you nano it again it's there so that's nano and you can use it for editing like config files and whatever all right i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it helped you get started with the linux terminal and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.